Got some past exam questions here for the alkanes topic. It's a second batch that I've done. So if you want to have a go, the link to the questions is in the description of the video. So just click on that, try the questions, and then play the video for the answers. Okay, so question one's about the cycloalkanes. So we've got a table of three. Cycloalkanes got the name, the skeletal formula, and the boiling point. First question, what's meant by the term homologous series? So the definition is compounds with the same functional group or same chemical properties, but each successive member differs by CH2. General formula for these cycloalkanes is CnH2n, because at each carbon you've got two hydrogens, so obviously you're going to have double the amount of hydrogens to carbons. And now we've got to explain the increase in the boiling point of the cycloalkanes. So you can see clearly as the um, number of carbon atoms in the molecule increases, so does the boiling point. So that's down to the strength of the intermolecular forces between the molecules. So something like this would do. As the number of electrons increase, the strength of the induced dipole or London forces increases. More energy is therefore needed to overcome the intermolecular forces. So it's really important that you name the type of intermolecular force involved. So induced dipole or London. And then once you've done that, you can just refer to them as intermolecular forces. Part B gives us the bond angle between the carbon atoms in cyclohexane. So we've just got to explain why we've got that angle of 109.5. So I've just drawn part of cyclohexane up there. So around each carbon, you've got basically four bonding regions. So they would all repel equally. And that would give you the tetrahedral shape and obviously that 109.5 degree angle. Okay, so moving on to part C now. Slightly tricky this one. We're not familiar with um, um, alkanes undergoing addition reactions. So we're told that without UV, cyclopropane undergoes addition reactions with bromine suggests the structure of the uh, product. So if you think about cyclopropane, all of the carbon atoms are currently making their four bonds. So we can't add bromine onto that. So to get the two bromine atoms on, we've basically got to break the ring open. So imagine the ring opens and it sort of unfolds. And that would allow a bromine to go on at each end. So we need the bromine on carbon one and carbon three. A couple of multiple choice questions now. So which equation shows a propagation step in the mechanism for this particular reaction? So A is not right because that's an initiation reaction. B is not right because that's a termination reaction. C looks like it could be right because it does look like um, a propagation reaction. But when chlorine radicals react with things like that, they will always take a hydrogen and make an HCl molecule. So that's why D is the right answer. So chlorine radicals always remove H to make HCl. How many structural isomers have the molecular formula C5H12? So I would just draw them out. So obviously you've got the chain of five. Reduce the chain to four, the main chain to four. Put a branch on, so that branch can only go there because if you put it there, you've got the same molecule. And then reduce the longest um, chain to three. You've got two methyl groups and you've got that there. So B was the answer, three possible structural isomers. Question four, explain how sigma bonds are formed. State one feature of this type of bond. So the sigma bonds form when a shared pair of electrons, so you're getting in the sort of fact that it's a covalent bond, shared pair of electrons formed by end-to-end -end or direct overlap of orbitals, and these bonds can rotate freely. So we've got this long question five to finish with. So first thing, what's the empirical formula of hexane? That can be simplified and still have whole numbers to C3H7. Part B, what's meant by the terms saturated and hydrocarbon? So saturated is where all the carbon-carbon bonds are single bonds, basically. Hydrocarbon, compounds that contain only carbon and hydrogen. It's really important you have only there. Skeletal formula for 2,2-dimethylbutane. So you need a main long chain of four, one, two, three, four, and then two methyl groups off the second carbon. You could have put them down there if you'd wanted. Moving on to part D, where I've got to describe and explain the trend shown by the boiling points of the hydrocarbons in the table. Um, 
In the previous boil and point trend question, it was all down to the number of electrons. Well, it's not here because they've all got the same molecular formula. They're all structural isomers. It's down to the amount of branching. So you can see in hexane, there's no branching. In 3-methylpentane, there's that one methyl branch. And in 2,2-dimethylbutane, we've got two methyl branches. So you see the boiling point, as the number of branches increases, the boiling point decreases. So something like this would be fine. As the extent of branching increases, the boiling point decreases. Branching reduces the amount of surface contact between the molecules. That's what it's all about. So the strength of the induced dipole or London forces will decrease. Moving on to part E, decane can be cracked to form hexane and one other product. Basically, we've just got the equation, get the equation to add up. So, starting with that, we're cracking it to make C6H14, so that's your hexane. So, we've got four carbons left and eight hydrogens. So, you could do that, or you could say that that was two ethane molecules. It still kind of fits the question because it's just making two products. Part F now, write an equation using molecular formula for the formation of this dihaloalkane from butane. So I'll just talk about this first. So every time you make a substitution, you need a halogen molecule, so chlorine in this case. And every time there's a substitution, you make an HCl molecule. So if we're doing a di substitution here, we're going to need two chlorines and we're going to make two HCLs. So the equation looks like that. Next part of the question, so the displayed formula of 1,4-dichlorobutane, 1, 4 is that. And the name of this one, you've got chlorine at 1 and 3, so it's 1,3-dichlorobutane. Part G, we've got to define the term homolytic fission. You can see I've colour-coded this because it's kind of two things we need to say. We'll start with the fission, so that's when a covalent bond breaks. The homolytic bit one electron goes to each atom. So I've drawn a little diagram there. So chlorine is broken by the UV in such a way that the left-hand chlorine gets one electron, the right-hand chlorine also gets one electron. You could say there for the homolytic bit producing two free radicals if you wanted to, but I always use that one. Next part of the question, you notice the dots haven't been drawn by OCR. They sometimes do that, so I've just put them in there. Um, you don't have to, by the way, but just to make the point that that's the radical. So propagation steps, you always have a radical and a non-radical, making a new non-radical and a new radical. Okay, so um, remember what I said before, chlorine radicals will always take out hydrogen and make a hydrogen halide, so we get an HCl. And then the leftover, so basically that minus the hydrogen, is the new radical. That then feeds into the second propagation step where it reacts with a um, halogen molecule and you get the dihaloalkane and a chlorine radical. And then the final question, we've got to write an equation for the incomplete combustion of butane. Incomplete combustion forms either CO or C. You can actually make both of those, but it kind of makes the equation a bit more complicated to write. So we'll just keep it simple. There's no point complicating it if we don't need to. So you can see I've written the carbon monoxide version and I've written the carbon version. 